Hello again. So today we're going to talk a little bit about cells in general and then prokaryotes, which are one type of cell. So this all starts with the cell theory, which was, um, well, you remember um, Robert Hooke and he had the compound microscope. So this kind of started with him because he said, or he saw cells. So then it became evident that all living things are made up of cells. Cells are the smallest working unit of all living things. And that's because there are single celled organisms. So you can have a single celled organism, a multi celled organism, or like us, you know, billion celled organism. Excuse me. The third part of the cell theory states that all cells come from pre-existing cells through cell division. So in other words, cells just don't pop out of nowhere. They, they actually come from another cell that is has replicated or split. So again, cell theory, all living things are made up of one or more cells. And that includes bacterial cells, plant cells, human skin cells, and human red blood cells. Human red blood cells are single cells, bacteria cells are one single cells, but then or other living organisms like us, including our skin, is multicellular as our plant cells. A cell is the smallest unit capable of performing life functions. So here we have a bacterium and an amoeba. And those are, those are organisms, those are life forms, uh, but they are only one cell. And then all cells come from pre-existing cells through cell division. So here we see a cell that is um, multiplying, it's dividing, and then dividing some more. And it eventually becomes two more, two cells rather than one. So a cell uh, is the smallest unit of um, carry, unit capable of carrying life functions. So then we need to know what are the life functions. So there are four of them, and they are reproduction, growth, responsiveness, and metabolism. So what are each of those? Well, reproduction is pretty obvious. That means the cell or the organism can recreate itself either through asexual, meaning no sex involved, or sexual reproduction, in which case, you know, like in this example, I have obviously the human, uh, and then I also have tomato plants. So a tomato plant, you know, will drop its seeds, and then the seed will sprout into a new tomato plant and carry on ad infinitum. They also must be able to grow. So back to the tomato plant example, the tomato plant grows, gets bigger, and then develop seeds, which then repopulate. And the same is true for humans, animals, plants, everything else, any, any, uh, any organism or any cell that carries on life can grow. And then there's responsiveness. So we need to be able to respond to things or <laughs> bad, you know, things in our environment besides, you know, like um, the hot air, cool air, you know, grizzly bears, woolly mammoths, um, you know, your husband, your wife, your girlfriend. We just need to respond in some way to things that are happening in our environment. And the last thing is metabolism. And metabolism means we use components or minerals or cell, um, molecules uh, to create metabolism. And metabolism is the ability to use food to create work. And in this case, uh, you know, we eat a food substance. And then by, by eating that, we have energy in which to do work, whether that is growing or whether that's actually working as a landscaper or using your brain for something, those are all considered work. And that's a res result of having metabolism. Now there are two primary classifications of cells. The difference, there are differences between those two types and there's differ differences in uh, their function and their structure. So the primary two cell types are prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Guess which one's more complicated? Eukaryotes, and that's us. Uh, prokaryotes are very simple organisms and that's why they're small and in gray, they're usually smaller, but eukaryotes are capable of all kinds of things. Eukaryotes become actually humans and animals and all that other stuff. 
So what are the prokaryotes? They are bacteria and archaea. Uh, you might recall, I think I mentioned archaea. Those are the, the ones that are similar to bacteria, but not bacteria that live in some of the extreme environments. And everybody knows what bacteria is. So both of them are prokaryotes, as I mentioned, uh, and they're very simple organisms. So they have no membrane surrounding their DNA. So they don't have a nucleus. Their DNA, DNA is just sitting in their cytoplasm. So just sitting inside their cell. They also have no membrane bound structures inside. They're very small. So they're less than a micron in diameter and they have a very simple structure. So not complicated. So this is an image of one. You don't need to know very much about these, just that they do exist. Um, the one thing about bacteria, as a, one, two things, uh, there's a chromosome and it's just floating around in the cytoplasm of the cell gel, if you will. Um, and then they also have a cell wall. And that's important because animals do not have a cell wall. Some plants do and some fungi do. Fungi's got um, a cell wall made of a different material, but bacteria have a cell wall. And as they also have some organelles inside. Uh, they have a cell membrane and they have those little flagella, which we'll talk about in a little more detail. So prokaryotic cells, structure and function. So some external structure, structures of prokaryotic cells, they might have a glycocalyx and plural is glycocalyces. Uh, they might have a capsule or a slime layer. They also might have flagella and they might have fimbrae and pili. So these are external structures of prokaryotic cells. So here's a glycocalyx. There are two types, capsule and slime layer. And both of them are pretty much kind of a gelatinous, sticky substance surrounding the outside of a cell. So why do they have those? Well, that allows them to firmly attach to other cell surfaces. It protects them from drying out. And importantly, it may prevent recognition by organisms. So if bacterium gets inside our lungs, you know, our immune system might not see it because it's got all that goop there. It might not say, oh, there's an invader. It might just like be hidden. So that's important. And this is a picture of um, uh, bacterial cells, coxi, that are, that have capsule around them. So you can see that uh, it's showing, um, is kind of a white looking area. And then the slime layer is loosely attached to the cell. It's water soluble. It also helps protect the cell from drying out. And it's a sticky layer that allows prokaryotes to attach to surfaces. So very similar to a uh, capsule. This is a slime layer that might be in your mouth right now. <laughs> I hope not. Um, but you can see it's also when you have many of them, it's called a biofilm. Uh, and that's, you know, that's bacteria. They're very icky, gooey. And then they kind of form a little colony together, which is a biofilm. This is an organism, a bacteria that has many flagella. Flagella are used for motility. So it helps the bacterium uh, move around in its environment. So they might have one or they might have more different, uh, uh, might have more flagella, not different types. So they can have different arrangements of flagella. So the top one just has one flagellum and the bottom one has, I don't know, five or six or seven. They're in the same place, but um, there's there might be multiple ones. And these are different arrangements. The one at the top, you can see the little kind of spiral spring. It has flagella on each end of the organism. And then the one below it has just flagella everywhere. So it's capable of going all over the place <laughs> fast, I would imagine. And then the other external structures I mentioned were fimbrae and pili. So these are non-motile extensions. So fimbrae are, um, they're like bristles. So if you think of like a hairbrush, they're, they're, they're stiff kind of like that. They're used by bacteria to um, hook onto each other, to their host or to other substances in the environment. So similar to the glycocalyces. And there may be hundreds of these per cell. They're much shorter than flagella and they are important in biofilms. So that um, the yucky plaque um, I showed you uh, that is, um, a result of these bacteria sticking together with slime layers and fimbrae. So in this image shows you both flagellum and fimbrae. You can see in the red, those are the really tiny uh, fimbrae and the flagella are really a lot longer. 
Pili are uh, different from both. So pili are longer than fimbriae, but shorter than flagella. And there's usually only one or two per cell. Now, these are important because they can join two bacterial cells together and then they mediate the transfer of DNA from one cell to another. And this process is called conjugation. So here you have a bacterial cell, here's a bacterial cell, and it has uh, a pili and it and, you know, attaches to this other organism. And then it can transfer material between the two of them. So they often call this a conjugation pili or a sex pili. It's not a sex organ, but they call it that because there is transfer of DNA. So here is an example of pili and fimbrae. So um, in, in this case, they're called that this diagram calls it male and female, but they're not really male and female. They're, they don't have sexes. Um, but this does show a sex pilus from one organism going to attach to the other organism. And then fimbrae, you can see, are spread out kind of all over. Um, and it is attached to a surface, but it's not attached to another bacterium in this particular image. So here is what a conjugation pillus looks like from electron micrograph, uh, again, colorized. So it has um, contacted the other cell, and then it's probably going to transfer some DNA. But first, let's talk about the last exterior surface on uh, a eukaryotic cell, which is prokaryotic cell wall. Now, a cell wall, it does the obvious things. It provides structure and shape. And it also protects the cell from osmotic forces, which is water basically. So if you put a cell in water and it doesn't have a cell wall, it's gonna absorb all that water and expand and pop, just like you know a balloon if you blow it too high. Um, and then also cell walls help bacteria avoid antimicrobial drugs. We do get through some of them, but that is another purpose of the prokaryotic cell wall. So here is just another kind of cartoon image of bacteria. Uh, you can see that it has the capsule, which is the red. Uh, then it has a cell wall, which is the yellow. And then it has a plasma membrane, which is just inside the cell wall. And then it has cytoplasm, which is kind of that gelatinous substance that's inside of the cell. And then it has um, uh, and the nucleus. So that's just, no, not the nucleus. It has chromatin, which is the DNA or whatever. It's not inside a capsule, so it's not a nucleus. It's just, it's just considered, um, you know, nucleotoid, nucleoid material, DNA, whatever. And then this particular bacteria also has a flagellum. Just another image, very similar. Same thing, cell wall, capsule, uh, plasma, uh, membrane or cell membrane, and then the cytoplasm and the flagellum. So again, bacterial cell walls help provide structure and shape, and they prevent the cell from water coming in or going out. And they also help bacteria avoid antimicrobial drugs in some cases. This is a strange wall. I mean, it's like, it's just a wall set up in the middle of nowhere. Hopefully it has something on the other side that we just can't see. <laughs> like, why do they have a wall there? Um, so what are some of the internal structures of prokaryotic cells? You don't really need to know much of this, just, um, you know, it has cytoplasm just, and, and then it has the chromosome with that's not in a nucleus. And finally, it might have a plasma, which is a small circular bit of DNA, not nearly as large as its chromosome or its DNA material, just a small little snippet of DNA. And in this case, you can see the plasmid um, kind of on the lower left, if you will. Uh, it's kind of circular looking, and that's a small bit of DNA. You can see the chromosome, which is much larger. So plasmids are important because they can, as I showed, um, they can the bacterium can conjugate with another bacterium, and they can um, exchange plasmids. And plasmids uh, uh, typically replicate independently. So this plasmid could replicate and then send an, a, a duplicate plasmid into the other cell. And they have a very small number of genes. They're obviously very small, but they have some important things that might be encoded on them. So they might um, uh, have antibacterial resistance forever, or they might code for something that protects them or uh, makes them uh, non-viewable to our immune system or something like that. So anyway, plasmid, small circular DNA inside the cytoplasm, not associated with the chromosome of the bacteria.
And then bacteria reproduce asexually, um, meaning there's no sex involved, obviously. Uh, they reproduce by a process called binary fission. And in this case, there's one parent cell. The parent cell replicates its chromosome and its plasmid if it has it. Um, independently or together. And then the bacterial, larger bacterial cell with two sets of chromosomes will split in half and become two daughter cells. Now, again, it's only one parent cell and then it creates two daughter cells. So there's not two parents. So it's not, it's not uh, sexual reproduction. It's binary fission, fission meaning cut, binary meaning two. Uh, and so here is just a little example of uh, a plasmid uh, that is going into a cell. So the red represents the DNA, the red inside the cell re represents the chromosome and the yellow represents the plasmid and it's being shared with the other cell that doesn't have it. And this is just another or little representation of um, bacterial conjugation. On the far left, we see a donor cell and recipient cell and uh, a growing pili. And then the next image, we see the conjugation bridge and the plasmid traveling across. And then we see the same thing kind of uh, in the third image. And then in the fourth image, we see that we have a duplicate plasmid in the secondary cell. Excuse me, secondary cell. All right. And that's it for cells. Um, and um, get uh, started on some other lectures pretty soon. Thanks for listening.